attention today, damage, injury to Philippines in South China Sea is irresponsible behavior, says U.S. Defense Secretary. Damage to Philippine vessels and injuries to their crew in the South China Sea is irresponsible behavior in disregard of international law, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin said on Thursday, weighing in on the latest flare-up involving China. Manila and Beijing have traded barbs almost daily since Tuesday's confrontation at the disputed Scarborough Shoal, opens new tab, where China's Coast Guard used water cannon against two vessels from the Philippines, prompting outrage from its government. We've been very clear to everyone. To include Beijing that the kind of behavior that we've seen, where Filipino crews are put in danger, sailors have been injured and property damaged, that is irresponsible behavior. Austin told a joint press conference in Hawaii. Austin reiterated the United States would continue to support its former colony the Philippines, as outlined in a 1951 mutual defense treaty. Our commitment to the treaty is ironclad, and we stand with the Philippines," he said after a meeting with defense counterparts of the Philippines, Australia, and Japan. Teodoro refused to speculate about the conditions in which Manila might invoke the treaty, saying that would be a political decision. The treaty binds the two countries to defend each other in the event of attack, including in the South China Sea, upping the stakes in a long-running battle for power that has seen China double down in asserting its territorial claim over most of the waterway, a key global trade route. Appearing alongside Austin, Philippine Defense Secretary Gilberto Teodoro said the two were committed to building capacity and deterrence to ensure no situation emerged that would require the treaty to be invoked. We need to assert our rights but in a manner that safeguards the safety of each and every member of the Philippines Armed Force, he added. The Scarborough Shoal a prime fishing patch used by several countries, has been occupied, opens new tab by China for more than a decade, and has been flashpoint between the Philippines and China, on and off for years. China this week accused the Philippines of encroachment and warned it not to challenge its resolve to defend its sovereignty. Tensions between them have escalated elsewhere in the South China Sea recently as the Philippines steps up its Coast Guard patrols near disputed features within its exclusive economic zone, while strengthening alliances with the United States and Japan, moves Beijing sees as provocations. Two Philippine vessels suffered damage from water cannon use late last month, while at least four crew members were injured in a similar incident in March. On other media, nearly 17,000 Filipino and American troops kicked off a three-week joint combat training exercise in the Philippines on Monday that includes maritime drills in the South China Sea where Manila and Beijing have sparred over territorial claims. France and Australia, which have ramped up defense ties with Manila in the face of China's aggressive behavior in the South China Sea, will join the maritime exercises. For the first time since the annual Balikatan or shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder drills started in 1991, the Allies will sail outside the 12 nautical miles of the Philippines baseline off the western Palawan province, which faces the South China Sea. The U.S. military's maiden deployment in the Philippines of a missile system covering a range that could reach China's southern provinces shows the drills are beyond self-defense purposes, according to Cao Waidong, 
a retired senior researcher at the Pelty Naval Research Academy. The drills, which will run from Monday to May 10, come amid an escalating diplomatic row and maritime encounters between the Philippines and China, including the use of water cannon and heated verbal exchanges. The use of the missile system, according to Philippine military colonel Michael Logico, would only be for logistical training and it will not be fired, emphasizing that the drills aren't aimed against China. The intention of targeting China's mainland is very clear, Cao said. We can also deploy to corresponding weaponry and alert equipment so that we can respond, he said without elaborating. U.S. and Philippine troops will also simulate the sinking of an enemy ship and retaking three Philippine islands, seeking to enhance the interoperability of their militaries. Bulakaihan will involve tracking of simulated air threats and targeting them with multiple air and missile defense systems as well as integrating multilateral air and land platforms to increase awareness of the maritime security situation, the U.S. Embassy said in a statement last week. Officials said the drills are not directed at any external aggressor, but will improve interoperability between their militaries. Exercises in those locations operate based on international order and international law, and well within your sovereign rights and responsibilities. We're conducting exercises that are normal, U.S. Lieutenant Gen. William Journey, Bulakatan Exercise Director, told a briefing. Beijing's increasing pressure in the South China Sea has alarmed Manila, rival claimants to disputed maritime territory, and other states operating there, including the United States, which has reaffirmed its commitment to defend the Philippines against armed aggression in the South China Sea. China claims most of the South China Sea, which is a conduit for more than $3 trillion of annual shipborne commerce. Beijing has criticized the joint drills, saying they aggravate tensions and undermine regional stability. The Permanent Court of Arbitration in The Hague ruled in 2016 that Beijing's expansive claims to the sea had no basis under international law. China rejects the ruling and has built military facilities on disputed atolls to back up its claims. During joint exercises, U.S. troops and their Manila counterparts will simulate retaking enemy-occupied islands in the northernmost islands of the country close to Taiwan and in the western Palawan province facing the South China Sea. The drills will involve around 16,700 troops from both sides, slightly less than last year's 17,600, which were the largest Bulacatan exercises since they started in 1991.